Okay, this is like part two of how the monopolist sets price. Once we know how they set price, we need to think about what some of those implications are. So quickly just putting back together uh, the graph that relates to the monopolist, we see the downward sloping demand curve, the marginal revenue curve lying below it, a typical Nike swoosh shaped marginal cost curve, and an average total cost curve uh, as well. So if we were operating in perfect competition, we know that price gets set um, where the marginal revenue equals marginal cost, and marginal cost tends to equal the minimum average total cost, and that would be the long-run equilibrium where economic profit is driven down to zero. And there wouldn't be a marginal revenue curve, right? It would be horizontal because it's equal to the price. And so this is what the output quantity would be then in a perfectly competitive environment. In a monopoly, the price is then set from the demand curve. So again, looking at marginal cost equal to marginal revenue, Revenue, that's the lower little red dot. The monopoly firm looks up to the demand curve and sets that higher price. Uh, the range from that upper red dot down to the average total cost curve, right, with the little pink bracket and now that shaded pink area, that area represents uh, the gap between the price and the average total cost, right, the cost of a typical unit. So they're getting a price that's higher than the cost of a typical unit, and that area then represents uh, the region of economic profit. And that will persist in the long run as long as they are able to maintain their monopoly position. They're the only firm in the market. Because of barriers to entry, the profit will continue into the long run. Now, that's not such a great thing for consumers, right? We're buying a uh, a product from a monopoly firm that's garnering extra profits and we can't really do anything about it. And there's another sort of social issue related to the monopolist profit. So if we think about deadweight loss from our discussions about consumer and producer surplus, if we don't have the market efficient outcome, then we're losing some opportunities to gain uh, consumer pr uh, surplus. So in perfectly competitive market, we would be operating at QPC, which is larger than the quantity from the monopoly firm, right? They don't increase their output because if they increase their output, they would have to lower their price to sell more of those units. And they don't want to do that. They want to keep their price high so that they can have that area of economic profit. So the quantity in the monopoly market is less than the quantity in the perfectly competitive market. And so that means we're not achieving buys and sells of the maximum number or the efficient quantity for that marketplace, and so an area of deadweight loss results. And so in a monopoly market, the firm makes that really well, consumers are paying a higher price, and the full level of efficient output won't be produced, so there's deadweight loss as well. And that's another one of the reasons that um, governments tend to step in and limit monopoly power.